Hi, I'm Kevin from Hudson Engineering Services and in conjunction with AstonOwners.com we have been carrying out a detailed development programme on the Aston Martin 6 litre V12 engine. Today we're focusing on root cause of issues that can be present and in particular the dreaded tick. So we'll talk you through some of the aspects we've found regarding the detailed parts inspections and we're going to find out what really makes these engines tick. We're at the stage now where the engine has been partially dismantled um, and we're going through each of the components and measuring and assessing. So what we'll do is we'll talk you through um, the different aspects, the things that we found, the, the things that we would expect to find and I'll be able to demonstrate to you exactly what has happened in this situation um, uh, and also in future videos uh, what we're doing to, to combat that. So the cylinder heads have now been removed from the engine and we have them here on the bench. Just a quick point um, that's worthy of noting, if there's been um, a major failure of a big end bearing or ingestion of a cat, this debris does actually find its way through the pump and, and round the engine. And one of the things that we found is when the, when the cylinder heads are sat on the V angle, the certain small cavities within the cylinder head where this debris can rest and what tends to happen is it accumulates and you can look into those cavities and quite quickly determine if you have had a major failure of a, of a bottom end component. It isn't conclusive but it's worth a look when you've removed the camshafts and cylinder heads from the engine. This one is absolutely spotless, there's no debris in there at all so we can hopefully say that there hasn't been a, a, a failure of a big end bearing to the extent where it's broken up and it's been passed around the, the oil system. Moving on to the inspection of the, the bottom end components, the crankshaft assembly, pistons, conrods have all now been removed and a, a notable point here is just what in fabulous condition these main bearings are. Um, they're almost brand new. There's no signs of wear, there's no scratches through contaminant being put round the engine. They're, they are in absolute perfect condition. The, the big end bearings on the conrods, which we'll move on to shortly, are, are in a, a similar condition with absolutely no wear. Everything is um, pretty much perfect inside and remarkably clean for an engine that has covered 61,000 miles. Having just completed the, the crankshaft inspection, everything is um, as we would expect after seeing the, the main and big end bearings. The main journals and the big end journals are all absolutely bang on size, closer to top tolerance um, than bottom, so we're mid-range which means that we'll be able to polish the crankshaft and, and reuse at standard size without regrinding. Continuing the inspection, we're now focusing on the piston and conrod assemblies. We've been through and measured each of the little end clearances, having re-talked the um, big end caps and the clearance is, is absolutely spot on and to, the, to Aston Martin specification so there's no wear there, there's no visible wear on the big ends at all. We've also measured the, the gudgeon pins and the size difference between the largest and smallest gudgeon pin right across the board is about two microns which is absolutely 
absolutely nothing really. Um, little end bearings, we've also measured these. Now there's a tolerance to the little, bear, little end bearings, which is, um, it's actually rod clearance from four microns to 20 microns. So we're on all 12 rods, we're probably approaching the 20 micron limit, but it's still within tolerance. And they're all pretty much identical. There's no rod clearance um, that is different from one cylinder to another. So it's um, within tolerance right across the board. With regard in the piston fit, the manufacturer's specification for piston fit is actually an interference. So the interference should be uh, one micron to five microns. So having measured the pins and measured the bores on the pistons, we're, we're roughly getting about two microns interference, which is okay to the book. And what else we've done as well is we've actually heated the pistons up to approximately 100 degrees Celsius to see what, what changes. So the expansion rate is um, the piston from top to bottom does actually, um, does actually increase by, by about 18 to 20 microns. And the bore from side to side remains the same. So we do have some ovality, but again, that, that is consistent from cylinder one to cylinder 12. There is not one piston that is significantly different, which would say that each of them are, are, are operating exactly the same way. If one was to produce a noise, the others would produce a noise. And the arguable noise, the tick that we had on this engine was, was, was definitely, from, definitely from one cylinder. Continuing the inspection of the of the engine, we're we're now focused solely on the cylinder block, cylinder liners, and the relationship between the cylinder liners, the cylinder deck face, and also the shape of the cylinder bores. So one of the things that we've we've measured is the relationship between the top of the liner and the and the deck face. So there is a tolerance for the allowable, permissible limit of the movement of the cast iron liner, which is located inside the aluminium block. Um, what we've noted, which is actually highlighted in red on the, on the screen behind here, is cylinder number three has some drop outside the permissible limit, cylinder 10 and 12 also. Cylinder three is marginally out of tolerance. Cylinder 10 is has dropped quite significantly um, to the extent where the tolerance has been exceeded in the drop. And when we refer to liner drop, it's the relationship between the top of the cylinder liner and the top of the, the deck face. And what this drop is, the cylinder liner moving below that. And there's a permissible limit um, that is allowed. And when we say it's out of tolerance, it's further than what is ordinarily allowed. And in the case of cylinder number 10 here, that drop, that movement of the cast iron cylinder liner within the block has exceeded the recommended allowance by over three times. And what we can measure is a direct relationship between this movement of the liner and the bore ovality. So as the liner drops, it's causing the, the bore to become oval. Uh, were squashed from front to rear and were elongated from side to side. Um, and this is quite a significant change in size and it is directly related to the movement of the cylinder liner. So what we'll do in the next video is we'll, we'll show you exactly what's going on behind those cylinder liners when we machine the cylinder block out. And Further, furthering our development, um, we have a solution which is genuinely an improvement over a repair for these issues. Thank you for watching. This is a one in a series of videos surrounding the Aston Martin V12 engine.
There will be further videos in the series where we'll be looking in detail of the other aspects of the project and I do hope you'll join us.